Hallo, letzter Tag im vollen Saal auf der GPN 21, Letzt, äh, erster Tag. Es <lacht> fühlt sich schon an wie Hinweis. Ähm, in den Content Notes zu diesem Talk steht, ähm, contains French and the speaker has a thick French accent. Könnt ihr mich verstehen? <lacht> Gut, ihr kommt mit österreichischem Akzent zu Ende, dann habt ihr überhaupt kein Problem, Garfield Airlines zu erkennen und er spricht über OMG, G, G, o, v, G, no. OMG, o, v, H, Barbecue. Viel Spaß. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Lehrer. <laughs> Bonsoir, public. Uh, first things first, of course, uh, there's going to be a lot of French content in there. <laughs> Come on, it's the second slide and you're already laughing. <laughs> the public is really going to be easy tonight. And since the room is full, I hope I don't have a lot of people to disappoint. <laughs> But yeah, uh, everything is in French. The official documents are in French. The press uh, articles are in French. The memes are in French. <laughs> and so on, and so on. So uh, first, things first. L'apéritif. What are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about OVH. It's uh, a French company founded in 1999 by a guy named uh, Octave Klaba. He's Polish and uh, it's inspired from his student name, Oles van Hermann. It can also mean uh, we host you, on vous héberge in uh, the original version uh, that was used on the FTP login. Uh, they're doing whatever your standard cloud services are doing. Bare metal, VPS, domain name, public cloud, uh, ISP are they doing as well, and many other things. Uh, they have, nowadays, a lot more servers than uh, what they had at the beginning in the north of France. They're having, yeah, around the world, servers. But what interests us is, of course, Strasbourg. Uh, yeah, now for a little bit uh, more context, they got uh, 70 terabyte global, net global network capacity and 34 data centers. Uh, but what's interesting is Strasbourg. As you can see, uh, they are uh, right here in the portuary section, just next to the German border. This is important for uh, Later. <laughs> It was at this very point uh, an old ArcelorMittal uh, emplacement. They're still there. Uh, they are at the end of a port dock, so you have to drive uh, 1.2 kilometers. I did that two weeks ago to scoot. Uh, had to see the security guard uh, telling me, what the hell you're doing here? This is a sensitive industrial place. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you know there are cameras everywhere, and I have seen you since the start. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I did a little bit of scooting for uh, this talk. There's still a little bit of ArcelorMittal, don't know what they're doing. Uh, they got uh, two times uh, 20 megawatt power lines there. This is also important for later. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's an industrial place just uh, two or three kilometers away from the center, the European Parliament, European Court of Justice, lots of things with European in it. Uh, And uh, since it's in a portuary sector, uh, let's say there's a lot of companies that uh, mm, have to say it, uh, go into fire. For example, here, uh, Scholl Recycling, 50 tons of plastic waste going into flames. Uh, again, three seriously injured, uh, a grain silo has exploded. Again, a polyurethane fabricant, uh, Again, a uh, malt uh, fabric that exploded. Do you think I'm done? Again, uh, a Rhein Europe terminal uh, that is doing logistics uh, for the Port Autonome de Strasbourg. By the way, I checked their website and... Seriously, guys? HTTP? In the year of the current year? Come on, guys, I'm in. 
<laughs> I think it's there. But you think I'm done? I'm not. <laughs> Yet another recycling company that went into fire. So that was it for l'aperitif. Now let's go to le plat principal, the building of OVH itself. Uh, as you can see, at the day of the burning, uh, we had uh, four different, uh, five different buildings. The fifth one wasn't uh, operating, it was still in construction. And uh, what took fire was the SPG2, and it leaked slowly on the SPG1. We have another plan here. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, we have here uh, the two uh, uh, power transformators, and this little shiny boat will get to that later again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very powerful boat. So, uh, the plan, uh, this is coming from an official document, the other slide too. Uh, I'll give you all sources at the end. Uh, as you can see, you have at the top of SGB3 a diesel tank of 10,000 liters. Under SGB5, there's the same. And uh, according to documents that I've seen, there's uh, a little bit more of underground fuel storage. So there's sort of 30,000 liters of fuel. Yeah, uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, there was already an incident in 2017, in November. What happened? Uh, both power lines uh, didn't have electricity anymore. Bad. What's worse, uh, the diesel generators haven't started. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened? All four buildings were down. <laughs> and uh, they <coughs> had the power turned off, and measures were taken here. Uh, oh yeah, you can't really see uh, the uh, overline, but basically they promised to shut down the servers in SPG1 and SPG4 and migrate everything to SPG3. This wasn't the case. It has been 3.5 later, uh, 3.5 years between this announcement and the fire. Nothing has been migrated. <laughs> from what I've seen. So yeah, let's get to uh, some plans. Sorry. Uh, you have here uh, the SGB1, the first prototype. As you can see, it's just portuary containers stacked one over the other. And uh, they took a canvas sheet to make uh, the cooling tower effect, like a chimney. Uh, I'll get to that uh, with, with this plan, another one of the containers. Uh, and here you have what's inside. You can see uh, the servers installed. You have on one side the water cooling, and on the other side, the smaller side, uh, there's fans to let the air go out. And here you can see uh, these buildings on SGB2 stacked one on top of the others. As you can notice, uh, there's wood on the floor. <laughs> it had a coating of one hour for fire protection. Yeah, you guessed it, it wasn't enough. <laughs> so yeah, that's the end building, still in progress. Uh, for SGB2, that was five, five floors. So then, just another side quest. Uh, this news article happened three days before the fire. <laughs> they announced they wanted to go into the stunk market. <laughs> it has been uh, moved on uh, six months later. Again, we'll get to that later. <laughs> the Klaba family owns 70% of the stocks, and it started at the stock exchange at 18.5 uh, euros. They had a range between that and 20 euros, they went for the lower, but as you can see, mm, I'm not a Wall Street, a Wall Street bet retail, but it wasn't really going good. So, now, the spark, what interests us, the fire itself. It was detected at uh, 35 minutes, midnight, 35 minutes, there was an alarm at the security station. 
They notice it, it very quickly. The guard enters the energy room. The battery is in UPS uh, on uh, the, as a, the number two uh, energy room. Sorry, it's located on the ground floor of SGP two, and there's a thick black smoke. Two minutes later, the entire building is evacuated. You had uh, two other technicians working there. It was night, so night service. Uh, they quickly called uh, the fire brigade with a uh, group leader, uh, pump van, turntable ladder. And here's the famous let's pictures of the security cameras. <laughs> uh, yeah. On the left, you have the batteries with the lead. And on the right, uh, you have uh, the uninterruptible power supplies. Just. <laughs> Just for the record, uh, there's uh, 800 times 30 kilos of lead batteries. That's 13 kilowatt. So yeah, then water cooling. The fire brigade arrives, and they requested the, to shut down the electricity at Electricité Strasbourg, uh, basically uh, the one maintaining the power lines. Thick black smoke appears at the ground floor, and electrical arcs are forming at the door of the power room. <laughs> <laughs> you have uh, one meter wide uh, flashes and very, very loud disorienting banks. <laughs> and they deployed a water lines uh, while waiting for the substation to be powered off. Yeah. The emergency power supplies, the diesel generators, were turned off. Because this time, it was working. <laughs> <laughs> you really shouldn't, but this time it was working. And of course, on the other building too. <laughs> the fire uh, brigade, uh, 47 minutes later, attempted a recon on the power room. Uh, where the batteries and the interruptible power supplies were, the thermographic camera records 400 degrees on the room. Of course, they couldn't get in. <laughs> and at this moment, the fire brigade just learned that's actually lead batteries. So yeah, that's a CPU monitoring from a brave, willing server that <laughs> Did it's best until the end. <laughs> You'll notice it's not two o'clock yet, but yet the server was still running at two o'clock, so that's one hour and a half after the first spark. <laughs> Almost 19 degrees. Well, um, it was probably more than 19 degrees, to be honest. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Strasbourg Electricity Réseau arrives on the building, uh, the campus, and they can't turn off the electrical substation because the substation belongs to OVH. <laughs> Not their problem, <laughs> as far as, can, as I can recall. The, spa, the fire, of course, in between was spreading, and it was ruled out that this was not possible anyway because it was too close to the fire. Decision is made to cut off a bit above the other uh, distribution substation, so yeah, that's going to last a bit. The temperature on the second floor saturate. <laughs> temperature uh, sensor, excuse me. And then they remotely, finally, after one hour 15, they remotely turned off the electricity at the substation further away. But the server is still powered on. <laughs> At this moment, uh, one hour 49 exactly, uh, the German Leitstelle uh, was informed that there was a thick smoke, uh, cloud smoke coming in, because of course it was just 50 meters away from the German border, and there's lead batteries. <laughs> so as you can see, this substation, from what I understood, belonged to Auvergne. But yeah, let's recap. Uh, we got the uninterruptible power supply with rectifier, inverter, uh, static bypass, and the batteries. We turned the diesel generator off. We turned the power uh, supply off. It was still running. 
Why? Well, of course, you had batteries. <laughs> so the servers were still running on the lead batteries. <laughs> There was no emergency procedure and technical procedure to easily shut off the uninterruptible power supply, which has added difficulties to the fire brigade, of course. <laughs> there was, of course, you understood, no emergency shut-off button. <laughs> and it was difficult to know when exactly the batteries were empty, but it was estimated that the batteries lasted 20 minutes. So until 2 hours 14 in the morning. Then, let's go on. <laughs> There's still power and it's now totally burning. <laughs> uh, and the fire, of course, is propagating to SGB1 and the boat Europa is coming to help. As I said, it's a big boy. And according to the expert note, the, oops, Oops. <laughs> the expert note the building was secure electrically at 2 hours 30 a.m. Then you have a nice uh, little uh, pictures from uh, the fire brigade of the Bahrain. You can see the Europa boat here and uh, SGB2 um, a little bit lit. <laughs> and SGB1 in front uh, slowly catching the fire. Regarding the cloud itself, uh, it was 200 meters high and they measured officially uh, nothing significant. The problem here, as you already noticed, is that the concept of the data center itself only helped <laughs> the fire. <laughs> as we say, it was literally working as intended. Yeah, yeah, we can see Europa in action and uh, two uh, fire holes. Uh, yeah, they made, uh, they used water and foam. They made again measurement because lead, uh, electronic components and some stuff. They found nothing in the water and the foam. So then, finally, 3 hours 28. The power is totally off. That's almost three hours. <laughs> Uh, the fire is finally under control at 6.45 in the morning. But it's still impossible to enter the building since it was so hot, it has uh, destroyed the structure and it's unsafe to go in. The fire is totally extinguished at 10 and the fire brigade intervention was over at 18.13. So yeah, the little boat. As you can see, it pumped a lot of water and was really helpful. It's actually a cooperation between uh, the port of Kiel and Strasbourg. It belongs to France and Germany. Yay, European cooperation. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you had, of course, the two uh, fire trucks with both that amount of water which brings us to a total of 20,000 liters per minute. That's 171 bus stops per minute, according to uh, a bus stop with 140 liters, 40 liters. According to the fire brigade, that was not enough. <laughs> the other problem was, as you can remember on the map, it was at the end of a dock, uh, of a portal dock, which means it was also at the end of the municipal water supply. So that wasn't enough. So contributing factors to the fire, of course, there was no automatic fire suppression system inside the building. There was no inert gas, no sprinklers, nothing. However, the detection has uh, worked perfectly. They noticed it quickly and acted quickly. That, I must say it. There were fire doors, but they were kept open. <laughs> 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 uh, 
I'm not making this shit up. This is in the governmental report about this incident. <laughs> Uh, the fire suppression, again, would have helped to control the temperature and the progression of the fire, but since there were none, it was a fire festival. Uh, electricity. There was no easily accessible uh, emergency power-off switch. They had to let the battery die down, they had to uh, cut everywhere outside, there was no button to turn it off. Uh, the electrical stop station too close from the fire, making it impossible to operate, as I said before. The diesel generator started despite the fire. The OVH technician had to manually stop them. And the battery were giving energy still uh, until they died. There was also an added delay for electricity to Strasbourg Réseau, so that they find the power uh, supply up ahead and turn it off. So yeah, in between, let's look at the monitoring of OVH 10 hours after the fire. That was SGB1, <laughs> 2, 3, and 4. Everything's working fine, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Not. So yeah, uh, fun aside, what the hell was going on? Why was it burning in the first place? Truth is, there are two hypotheses and uh, we don't really, really know what's going on. They're still looking into it. The first hypothesis, there was a lot of technicians uh, call to the uh, company who produced the UPS. There was a lot of uh, switch to static bypass. It was unexplained. And uh, yeah, it, it happened at the same time in the UPS and on the batteries. The batteries itself were routinely maintained. Uh, the last uh, maintenance of the, uni uh, the UPS was the very same morning. The second hypothesis is a peak in humidity that was uh, detected in uh, 11 15, uh, the day before, technically. Can zoom it uh, on it. That's again the official governmental document. There might, this is conditional, have been liquid because a cooling system installed in proximity or it is related to the maintenance. Or a short circuit in the lead battery due to the humidity uh, could have made it happen. However, lead batteries are very robust and uh, the batteries had no monitoring, but the lifespan recommendation of the fabricant were respected. As I said, the investigation is ongoing. These are only hypotheses. We don't really know what's going on. <laughs> then, impacted services. According to Netcraft, uh, 3.6 million websites over 464,000 distinct domains were taken offline after the major fire. More than 80% of the OVH IP addresses were down. <laughs> and uh, it's unsurprisingly, there's a lot of uh, French domains that were affected, of course. And uh, yeah, sorry for the wall of text, but yeah. 4% of the French domains, and a few thousand .com top-level domains and other things like that. So what exactly was affected? First, yeah, lots of non-profit, small online shop, personal project, personal servers. If you had a Kim Sufi, it was maybe there. <laughs> uh, governmental organization were hosted there. Defenseur des droits, so defender of rights, everything regarding uh, discrimination and so on in France. Uh, numerous uh, town websites. The open data portal of the French government was down. Transportation services. Uh, there were websites of uh, numerous uh, transport websites that were down, including the airport of Strasbourg. 
we had a virtual e-learning environment for a lycée uh, in Germany, that's uh, Realschule, Gymnasium, uh, und so weiter, hab ich das recht? Vielleicht? <laughs> Uh, so this means uh, you couldn't see the notes of the students, uh, what homework they had to do, and so on. We had uh, various sport organizations, so yeah, your local handball team, and so on. Uh, web radios stopped streaming, because they were hosted there too. But yeah, Centre Pompidou, a museum, was also done. That's just a few examples. If I have to list everything, uh, we're still here tomorrow morning. No, international. Uh, then WordPress plugin, uh, VP Rocket and Imagify were down. VeraCrypt, encryption software, the website and GitHub, then local GitHub, uh, Chess Portal, a B2B electronics news website, an Algerian bank was down. <laughs> <laughs> and the certification uh, uh, agency for vehicles in the United Kingdom were down. <laughs> But I kept the best for, the, for now. There were also uh, cyber uh, command and conquer servers hosted by OVH that were down. So cyber malware was reduced. <laughs> <laughs> That's the director of the global research and analytics team named Great at Kaspersky Lab. Uh, yeah, so apt, including Charming Kitten, apt 39, related to iron services, uh, Bahamut's uh, cybercrime groups, and Ocean Lotus from uh, Vietnam. Down. <laughs> But Germany was also affected, and it was a sad day for uh, memes. A <laughs> uh, uh, very, very known website in Germany was down. <laughs> and I find it extremely ironic that it's hosted in France when one of the most used tags is it's wrong French to be French. Es ist falsch, Franzose zu sein. Yet your server are in fucking France! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, we're talking a lot about down servers, but when your service is down, what are you thinking about? That's right, uh, a recovery plan. And the first thing in a recovery plan is backups. And yeah, it's in baguette uh, <laughs> <laughs> What basically happened is that uh, OVH sells their uh, backup options uh, for five euros per month. A lot of small businesses skipped on the expense, and since it's the cloud, they hosted it there, and they lost all their data. So what did they do to get their website back? That's right, they rushed on Google Archive and archive.org to get their uh, homepage back. <laughs> Perfect example, we have here uh, a jewelry store, La Pique Court, that sends uh, orders everywhere in France. The website was gone, it was a presta shop. No backups, of course. The customer databases and the contacts, well, they were gone. <laughs> There's an estimated 2,000 uh, euros uh, financial damage, and uh, for this, OVH proposed 30 euros as a uh, commercial gesture. <laughs> you are losing, but that's six months of hosting. <laughs> And uh, in the article, she said, uh, I will go somewhere else with a backup solution. So she learned the lesson. Yeah, and even if you had backups, uh, yeah, there were companies who were a little bit more tech savvy and thought, I'm going to take backups. Great idea. The backups were on the same side. So 
So, uh, the, they were a little bit pissed off, let's say it. <laughs> they went to the tribunal, and in February there was uh, the uh, court answer, OVH has to pay 100,000 euros. They asked for 6.5 million. Uh, the judge ruled OVH made no mistake or fault, but they had not respected its part of the contract, stating that backups were physically isolated. OVH will appeal the, uh, the uh, ruling. There's another company, uh, they asked for 330,115 euros, they got 150 uh, euros at the tribunal. Uh, the backup server survived, but uh, OVH restarted the servers and they haven't warned the customer. What happened? There was a con job. It started and it rotated everything, erasing the latest data. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make this shit up. So, the customer got his backup server back, but it was empty. <laughs> Absolutely empty. Uh, there's, they also appeal the judgment, and there's something like a class action from 140 companies that are in the same case, and they are asking for one, uh, 10 million euros. That's a story for later. Of course, uh, it's still in progress. But even if you were smart enough to have backups, well, not really. Uh, sometimes uh, you're really not trying your backups in, sometimes something missing. They got everything except one thing. Uh, the game of progression, it wasn't backed up off site. The players had to start with the character from level zero. But everything else was back. So yeah, not so bad. And then there's other cases like uh, Auchan a supermarket. Uh, from what I've seen, they had a contingency plan, and uh, they were back in a few hours. So yeah, there was a second fire. I bought it. What the hell? Uh, it was in SGB1, again. <laughs> Only one container was affected with 300 batteries and 25 kilo each. They were unused and not powered on. Uh, and yet, it went on fire. <laughs> they used foam. Uh, two employees felt unwell due to the fume, but it's okay. And uh, they promised to shut down SGB1 forever. But, but hold on, Klaba. You, you said that in 2017? <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and this time he's really saying uh, we're not restarting it ever. And as I said, I was on site, SGB1 was torn down. And uh, if I recall correctly, SGB4 too. Uh, yeah, so how have you learned your lesson? <laughs> they took very early smoke detection apparatus for their SGB5 and automatic fire suppression in that gas, uh, they got a new dedicated data center for backups, and the price tag of this bad boy is 30 million euros. So, as I said before, uh, they went into the stock market, and uh, they started with something like 18 euros and 50 cents. They had to postpone uh, for six months they, their entry into the French stock market, CAC 40, because of obvious reasons. <laughs> but yeah, how it's going, son? <laughs> I took this uh, tonight, 6 p.m. Since their entry, they lost 50%, so under 10 euros. I'm not a Wall Street bet retard, but uh, it's not looking good on a portfolio. <laughs> Yeah. So, the document itself, uh, as I said, it's uh, from uh, the French government. 
Uh, they have an uh, office dedicated to industrial risk. Depends on the Ministry of Ecological Transition. It's online, you can Google it. Uh, very easy to find. And the second one is uh, the Fire Brigade, which had a report of three sites uh, giving uh, uh, hot feedback on what's going on, what went correctly, what went not uh, correctly. And yeah, uh, the rest is on online dedicated uh, website for sysadmins and the net admins. Everything was uh, linked down, uh, right. And yeah, I promise to keep it short. So that's it from me already. There's a lot of more to talk, like a technical issue, governmental slide planification, a legal pages to build a data center. They even took private jets to bring technicians between uh, Lille and Strasbourg back and forth. That is coming back quickly. And yeah, uh, if you want to contact me, I got a shiny website. I got a cool key. It's Mastodon, but better. Uh, and of course, it's a CCC event. I got a deck too. So that's probably enough. <laughs> Merci public. <laughs> You were, you were quick. Want to do a little bit of Q&A? Are you okay with mm -hmm. it? Okay. So, um, unfortunately, uh, we are not doing Q&A for this talk. I'm very sorry. But he is available. I think he's recognizable. So, <laughs> buy him a drink of his choice. Uh, and if you have further questions on how to burn down the building, <laughs> <laughs> or how not to, um, Grab him for a talk, ask him questions, he's available. Please give another very warm round of applause. Garfield Airlines. Merci, public.